hey guys, so we've been so busy figuring out how to work a Zoom that we haven't really talked too much about the philosophy behind our discussion. So I wanted to just, just to kind of cover that a little bit. So I'm gonna start off here and jump right into um, sharing my screen. Uh, and so here is a, a presentation that I made. Uh, again, welcome to Physics 2B. And so I wanna talk a little bit about what we're trying to do here. Um, so this course, okay, we use many tools and techniques developed by the physics education research community. Uh, so for those of you who, some of you have taken a course with me, Physics 2B, some people Physics 500, which is the course where we uh, uh, give a little bit of education, teaching, training to the, the graduate students, uh, know that I'm really uh, into physics education research and using this sort of stuff in my classrooms. Uh, and, and this idea is, again, trying to apply the scientific method to the teaching and learning of physics. Now, it can be tough is, you know, you know, you know sort of, sort of this, the, a simplified picture of what you're trying to do with physics education research is, you know, say, try two different ways of teaching and then compare them. Uh, and the problem is, is it's really difficult in real life to do that because there's so many different factors that go into how a class works. Um, and so for me, I'm not that interested in individual studies sometimes, but more conglomerate studies. And so here's uh, the sort of one of the biggest, uh, most impressive studies in, in PER. This is a meta-analysis of uh, 225 individual studies. All right, and so here's uh, that sort of discussion there. Um, in the STEM field. And basically what uh, they did is they, they collected 225 different studies and looked at them to see if there's an overall uh, effect here. And, and what they found is that there is. There's, there's a positive effect in, what the, in the, all these studies here were ones that were comparing st um, uh, using some sort of active learning versus traditional instruction, where traditional instruction is you know, the instructor at the board uh, going through lecture notes with not much interaction between them and the students. Um, and so they found that there is you know, an improvement in test scores, and also there's an improvement in the number of people who drop or fail the course uh, in the courses that are using active learning. So there's a lot of, of research that shows that this is effective in terms of course results, student results. Um, and so here's our picture. This is sort of how I look at our discussion sections. Now for us, um, again, we're doing this on Zoom, so, so that's gonna add, add some things to this. But, but basically, the way this worked last year is a picture like this. So I did this last year in 2B. I've also done this for several years at different institutions. I, I was working at the University of Toronto before I came here. And so here you can see we have uh, this, this person and this person. So uh, I think here this was the TA and this was the tutor. And the idea here is you want the students to be working on these problems. Okay, so here's students working on problems. And then the, the TA and the tutor, and I look at those two roles as being equivalent in the classroom. You're going around trying to help people that get stuck, right? People are gonna get stuck, they're gonna need some help. And so your job is to go around and help them. But, but, I, but I, I think the focus is very much on them working through these problems and less on you showing them how to do it. And that's something that you'll get better at, but you wanna really focus on helping them get through that. Uh, here's an example of the problems. Here's the sheet from last year. Uh, so we'll typically give three to four problems. My philosophy is I'd much rather have someone go through the first problem and really get it down than try to rush through all of them. Uh, but of course, people work at different speeds, so it's nice to have a number of problems. Um, you know, part of what we'll do in our meetings is look at these sheets and, and kind of determine together whether or not we think uh, these are effective problems or the problems could be fixed or anything like that. But again, the idea is that the, the student would come, you know, you might talk a little bit uh, to them and then they would, you know, right away jump right in and start working on these problems uh, inside the breakout room. So the idea would be that, you know, again, this works really well or has worked really well for us in person. I'm hoping it'll work well in Zoom, but that's the philosophy there. Uh, so here's a little bit of data. So these are two questions. Uh, again, so I, I did this at the University of Toronto. This is a question. These are from the student evaluations there from the winter of 2017 of a course uh, very similar to 2B, basically the, the version of 2B at Toronto. Uh, during discussions, you worked through practice problems with your team, just like we're talking about. Was this an effective way of learning for you? You can see here that the students, you know, by pretty wide margins, 
agreed that this was an effective way for them uh, to learn. Uh, and then the next question compared to other discussions at the same level, right? And I'll just let you know that at, at Toronto at this time, most of the other discussions, chemistry, biology, other courses they might be in, math, uh, were, were more traditional. So there was a, a teaching assistant at the board working through problems. So you can see here that they, they feel that this was a, a better way um, overall of, of, of working the discussions. They felt like they got more help uh, available uh, this way. So, so not only is there research saying that this active learning, you know, actually gives us better results, but, but what I've seen in evaluations is that the students appreciate it too. They feel like it's, it's helping them as well. Um, so now I just thought I'd go through some questions. These are the kind of things we're going to be dealing with a lot. I'd love if you would post on Piazza with some of your solutions, uh, but this is where the, the hard part comes. So, so what are some of the hard things? Well, what if people are not engaging with their group? That's probably the number one thing uh, that can happen. So, so if you, for those of you in 2B, you probably had experiences where, where sometimes the groups work well, sometimes they didn't. Uh, so, I, so I do think part of that can be making the groups. We'll have to talk a little bit about this. Um, but also just some people just don't mesh well. I think sometimes there's people who just aren't really into this sort of thing. I've given the class that the option of, of opting out of this. And so they would have the ability to not do the discussions if they don't want. So the hope would be that if you really don't like this, you would opt out. Uh, but I do think even for, for, I think for everybody, this is really helpful. And so just the things you can do is I think just starting right away, this, this first class, it'd be really important to do some sort of activity where you get the students to start talking to each other. You might even want to start off every session with something like that, right? Uh, I think just going into the groups and encouraging them, if they don't seem to be working, you know, sort of try to get them to talk to each other, you know, say, hey, you know, student A, why don't you tell student B what you were thinking on this one? Or, you know, just sort of popping in. I mean, it's, it's going to be really difficult or, or it's going to be a really different sort of uh, thing going on here with these virtual Zoom rooms. Uh, I'm hoping that there'll be some positives to it as well as some some negatives, but we'll see. And, but again, this is the, the biggest thing here. I think just you know being consistent, making sure you're checking on them every couple of minutes so they don't get stuck would be a key there. Uh, what if nobody is asking questions during the discussion? You know, what if you pop in to the group, the break in breakout group, and they're just oh we're fine, you know no 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 problems here. You know, I would definitely follow up with that. I would ask oh can I see your work? Can I see where you are? You know, what question are you working on? Uh, you know, we're, we're going to especially at first do a lot of you know, seeing how well they are at sharing their equations and their work. That's going to be a tricky part. So I think the more you encourage them to do that, the better. Um, what if during practical, a student asks you a homework problem you cannot solve immediately? So, so, so that I think can happen. Sometimes you get someone, you know, you'll, you'll go into the group and say, oh, we're okay, but oh, can you help us with this problem? Uh, and so that's the kind of thing that, that, you know, I would probably put that off, say, hey, you know, why don't you hit me up on office hours for that? You know, here, because the idea is here, we're trying to learn this material together as a group, you know, to help us for the next homework. Uh, and so, so I would probably not do that. I mean, if you feel like you have the time, that's okay, but I definitely wouldn't spend a lot of time, especially, you know, sometimes they might ask you some homework problem that you haven't really thought through. You definitely don't want to sit there and stop and start working through it. You want to focus on these problems that you've sort of are familiar with and you can help them right away. So I would really try to divert all this to office hours. Uh, what if the students don't seem to be motivated? This can be a problem. I can only imagine this semester it's going to be a bigger problem. I think, again, that, that first class period is super important. You know, I would sort of, the, the two TAs, I would have you guys introduce yourselves, maybe talk a little bit about the research you're doing or what, you know, you're planning to do. Maybe for the tutors, talk a little bit about your experience in the discussion in 2Bs last year, you know, that kind of stuff. These kind of things, I think if you get to know the people a little bit, that can really help for motivation. You know, if you help, if you get to know their names, it'll be kind of easy because you'll see their names on the screen. That can help too. Uh, what if you feel like you've had a bad discussion session? So that's something, uh, this is more, you know, 
talking about you. Uh, so first of all, I think if you're going to teach for any amount of time, you're going to have a bad day. You're just going to have a day where you just walk out and you're going to feel like, boy, I just did horrible. You know, I'll be lucky if those students aren't worse off for what I just did. Uh, and this is, you know, I, I like to say that, you know, teaching is really tricky, right? It's a really hard business, you know, giving this, this knowledge, helping people sort of see you know, and, and come to the answer can be super frustrating. So I would just, you know, lay off, you know, look at what happened, see if there's anything you can improve. You know, maybe you weren't prepared enough. You know, maybe there's something you could have done to be better. But the number one thing is I would think, I would say not stress too much about it. And if there are some issues you have, bring those to our meeting. That's where we want to sort of come together and help each other get better at this. Um, what if you have a problem student that's like disrespectful to you? Luckily, I haven't had much of that here at, at 2B. So, so hopefully that won't happen, but, but definitely you are not paid enough to deal with this. So if there is some student that is giving you trouble, let me know and we will take care of it. Uh, you know, I think a lot of times what happens, like I've had this happen to me, uh, and then when you talk to the student, usually what's happening is there's sort of things outside of life that, that are sort of affecting them. And so, so I can sort of usually talk to them and hopefully solve the problem. You know, a lot of times just sort of talking to them a little bit and making them realize what they're doing can be really helpful, but definitely bring that to, to my attention. Um, what if someone gives a really bad response to a question? So this is a tough one, right? And I think we've, probably most of us have been in some situation where you know somebody either us or someone next to us sort of gave a, a bad you might consider a bad answer to a question or or forgot some math thing that supposedly we all should know and and i would just say you know try to be really patient and open here you know i think there's a mentality especially in physics you know you you'll see people sort of say, oh, that's a trivial problem or something like that. And I think that kind of language can make people really feel poor and really check out, right? Uh, and in, in reality, right, people are learning here. You know, none of us, when we took this similar course, got everything right. You know, none of us got this right away. You know, it's a trivial problem once you learn it maybe, but not right now. And I really think that the number one thing you want, you know, to sort of uh, get these engineers doing is talking about problems and being a, not being afraid to sort of say what they think. You know, if they can't say what they think, uh, if it's wrong, we can't fix it, right? And so, so this is something that the owl was probably going to, you know, I, I, this is something that I stress anyway, but I think this year it's going to be even more important to be really open and flexible and, and accommodating with this sort of thing here, right? We don't want to sort of create this world where people are afraid to only say the right answer, right? And so it's nothing we'll probably talk a lot about, uh, but I wanted to sort of focus on that. Uh, what if a student doesn't seem to have the proper math background? Again, I think this is another thing. I mean, obviously, you know, it's possible that you could not have the right math background, but I think everybody, you know, here got the appropriate grade they needed in, in calculus, right? So, so I think it's, 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 it's uh, often a, a problem of our expectations, right? I mean, you want to sort of help them and don't, again, don't make them feel bad because they can't do what you consider a, a simple integral or something like that, right? So, so I definitely think uh, that's the kind of thing that we really want to work on. So I, I got a little bit of feedback last year that there was some learning assistance, luckily not very many, but some that, that would have a kind of nasty attitude. And I tell you, it's like the one thing that can just destroy everything you're trying to do. Uh, and so it's really something we want to focus on. And, and really, in, in the end, you know, these are really smart people and everybody makes mistakes, right? And so, I mean, I don't think, you know, not knowing how to do a certain integral is really key, right? Uh, I think it's more about being able to, to think through stuff, and that's really what we're trying to, to, to sort of get them here. Uh, what if the students don't respond to your questions? I think this could be a tough one on, on Zoom. So I would say, you know, just, you know, give them some time. Maybe they're shy. Maybe they don't know what to say, right? Another thing you can do is kind of repurpose the question, maybe break it down to like, you know, if you're asking, you know, what is the answer to X? Maybe break it, back it up and try to ask a question that's maybe something that you would find on the way to X or something, uh, or, or, or phrase it in a different way to sort of help them, um, sort of come to the answer. 
Uh, but these are the really, again, the things that you're going to be doing and we're going to be talking about in our sessions. So I just wanted to, to kind of give us this uh, little quick, you know, pep talk video, please, on Piazza, ask questions or follow up if you have uh, concerns or anything. Thanks a lot.